You're listening to the Catholic Nurse Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Haugen, wife, mom, nurse, and Catholic life coach. The mission of this podcast is to coach Catholic women who work in healthcare to follow God's plan. Welcome, everyone. Today, before we get started, I want to talk to you about Caritus, the community for Catholic women who work in healthcare. And this starts out with a six week course, we'll call it, where you will meet every week for those six weeks. And I'll give you the tools to be a better mom, a better wife, a better coworker, and more importantly, how to love yourself. Okay. So I want you to go to catholicnursecoach.com to find out more information about this. After the six weeks, then you will be part of a community that will never end and that you can always find support and help in. And I'm so excited for it. It's so amazing. So go and check that out. Okay, today we're going to talk about wins and celebrating wins. And so for this, I found in my little handy book here, Saints Around the World by Meg Hunter Kilmore, um, Saint Thorlak Thorhalsen. And so he is from Iceland. He was born in 1133 and he died in 1193. And his feast day is December 23rd. I've never heard of this saint before. Um, Maybe it's because his feast day is around Christmas. And so, you know, all other things kind of get pushed aside then. But again, I thought it was a very interesting story. I thought it fit very well with what we're talking about today. So I'm going to read this for you again from the book Saints Around the World by Meg Hunter Kilmore, illustrated by Lindsay Sanders. So... St. Thorlach Thoralsen was different. He had lots of interesting thoughts, but he didn't like to talk much except about theology, and then he couldn't stop talking. Today, a lot of people think that maybe Thorlach was autistic, though we don't know for sure. We do know that Thorlach was very, very smart. He taught himself to read and had memorized all 150 psalms before he was even five, then got special permission to be a priest when he was only 18 years old. After he was ordained, he went to France and England to study for six years. When Father Thorlach got back, he realized that things were pretty bad in Iceland. It wasn't that people were treating Christians badly, is that it was that Christians were behaving badly, especially the priest. Some of them even tried to convince Father Thorlach to get married, which was ridiculous because he was already a priest. It got even harder when he was made bishop. After that, everybody kept crowding crowding him, trying to impress him, asking him questions, looking for favors, and getting frustrated when he didn't act the way they expected. It was exhausting. But God had made him a bishop for a reason. Bishop Thorlach had always had a special gift for understanding God's wisdom and for sharing it with other people. So he began changing things. He made people follow the rules that they'd been ignoring, but he explained why first. In confession, he gave people very harsh penances, 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 but then he told them he would perform their penance for them. Even when he was being strict, he was merciful. People weren't always comfortable around Bishop Thorlach, and because they weren't comfortable, they weren't always kind. But Bishop Thorlach was wise and gentle and humble. He had a hard time being with the rich and the powerful, but he loved the poor and the sick. And in his 20 years as bishop, he helped reform the church in Iceland, not by shouting at people, but by loving them, teaching them and calling them back to Jesus. This wasn't even though Bishop Thorlach was different. It was because Bishop Thorlach was different. A man who was just like the others wouldn't have been able to do all the good that Bishop Thorlach did. So God made St. Thorlach Thoralsen different. And that's a very, really a good thing. So let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, please help us to see that our differences are beautiful gift from you and that you want to use these gifts for greater glory for your kingdom use them to help others to allow ourselves to accept how we are different and to love ourselves and saint thorak thorlson pray for us in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen all right so this week just gonna have a short episode on wins and so last episode 
um, was a hard episode to record. I was going through a lot of things. And through all that, I have seen the beauty of how much I have grown and changed and how much God has allowed me to grow and change through challenges that arose in my life. And so I just am going to reflect on that a little bit and and also to talk a little bit about um, St. Thorak because I think so many times we get stuck comparing ourselves to others of how we're not doing this, we're not showing up. We'll look at, they have this Pinterest worthy life that they're living. And first I would say to question that and how do we know that's true? What does it even mean to have a Pinterest worthy life? I, I, last episode again, I talked about how I struggle sharing the times I'm going through hard things because I only want to show the good. I think that will make me be more accepted by people, more loved by people. But the reality is we're not that way. We're human. We fail. We all have challenges. And we can use that. God wants to, he wants us to invite him into those parts of our lives that are so hard and difficult, where we are failing and struggling, where we're striving to do better. And so as I was reflecting on that and looking at that and and looking at how St. Thorlac could like, he took his differences and he became bishop. He reformed Iceland. He, God had a special place for him because he was open to receiving that. And open open to allowing God's grace through him. So, are you looking for a difference in your life? Do you want God to be able to use these gifts and these differences that he's only given you? I want you to now reflect on some ways that you have had wins in the past months, years maybe. I want you to look back on how you used to show up and do things differently and how you're showing up now. So when can it be anything as simple as I got out of bed this morning, I gave my kids breakfast because our brain wants to be like, yeah, but it wasn't, I didn't make a breakfast. I didn't make them eggs. They had sugary cereal. They grabbed a granola bar as we were going out the door. And I just want you to, to show you, to, to for you to see, for you to have the possibility to question and be like, maybe that was a win. Because, yes, this morning I threw my kids a cereal bar, but you know what? I wasn't yelling at them as we got out the door. I've gotten better at planning ahead of time. When we're going to leave, I set things up. I have their shoes lined up and ready to go. Their outfits, they pick out the night before. Like I'm more organized with my time. I make schedules and lists so I know where I need to do and where to go. So like it's not all cluttery and foggy in my brain. I'm able to be then more present with my kids. So yeah, something as simple as getting out the door and throwing granola bars at your kids can be a huge win. It can be an amazing win when you see that, hey, I did that and I showed up for myself. I knew I wasn't going to have the time to make the eggs. I knew that would stress me out and put me farther behind. So I value my time and that is a huge win. I have been struggling lately with, with how do I show up in my marriage? How do I want to show up? How do I, do I want to show up? Right. And so I, I wallowed in the pain for a bit. I gave myself a week to just feel the awfulness. And I would invite you if that's still where you are, that's great. I mean, maybe not great, right? It sucks when you're in it. I would say like, that's exactly where you need to be right now. So go and listen to episode 42, 43 of this podcast and go and really allow those feelings. That's what you can do for yourself. And that's amazing. Those are great steps. 
I'm so proud of you for doing that. And then once you allow those feelings, I want you to look back and see how am I showing up differently? So for me, two years ago, actually three years ago, I wouldn't have just taken a week. I would have taken six months to wallow and self-pity and woe is me and this is horrible and this always happens and what's the point? And it only took me a week this time. You guys, like I am so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. And yes, I do have moments where like, I'm kind of fearful of like, I don't know, like, what if my husband decides he wants to leave tomorrow? What if we don't stay married? And I just allow those feelings and say, yeah, that's a possibility. But is it serving me to sit in that feeling and the what ifs? And I I know that it's not. I know that I want to show up differently no matter what. And so I think just like St. Thorlac was like, you know, Iceland needs a change. And you can't make people change. So I'm going to show up to be the change. And people ridiculed him and people didn't like him and people were uncomfortable with him. But he still said, no, I'm going to be the difference. I'm going to lead by example, which is really how I have felt this past week. I really felt like I have put in all this work to sort through my mind drama, to not just accept the beliefs that my brain wants to tell you, tell me I don't accept those anymore. I look at what might be true in there and how do I want to show up going forward? What results do I want to get in my life? And once you realize that, once you realize that our feelings come from our thoughts and are these thoughts that I want to continue to believe, maybe for a little while, that's okay. Maybe I'm kind of ready for a change, but it's scary and it's unknown. And so it's still uncomfortable and that's okay. And maybe I know it's time for a change. So if you're ready for a change, of course, come and book your consult call with me and I can talk you through it. And I'm so excited for you. If you're not ready for that change quite yet, I want you to reflect back and look at wins that you have. I want you to look at ways that you showed up for yourself. Did you drink water yesterday? And, and don't listen to that little voice that's like, yeah, but I didn't drink eight glasses. I only got two in. That's amazing. Two glasses of water in your busy lives. That is amazing that you got in two glasses of water. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Okay, what else? What are other ways? We took our kids school shopping the other day. And oh man, <laughs> there was some meltdowns. We did it almost right as soon as we got home for, for vacation, which was probably not the smartest time, but we really didn't know when else to do it. And yes, I I also had a few meltdowns. I also yelled at my kids a couple times, right? And was like not patient with them. But I also know overall that day went great. I know that I did not have a bunch of mind drama going on in my head, adding to the stress of the day. And for that, that is a huge win. That is a fantastic win for me. I'm so proud of myself. I know that I'm going to put the effort into my marriage and whatever the future holds for it, whatever it looks like, I know that I'm going to put in that effort I know that the effort I have put in for the past year has made a difference. I know it has. If anything else, it has allowed me to have peace and freedom throughout the chaos of other people's choices. 
So I could go on and on because this is an amazing feeling. Even when things are bad, right? Or I, I mean, not even bad, but like when things are challenging or things are struggling, I still have this underlying feeling of amazing self-confidence, self-worth. I feel successful. I feel empowered. And I know that you can have that too. So I'm so excited for you to have that. Again, book a console call with me. It's so amazing. I just want to pass it on. So I'm praying for you and let's go change our world.